Good morning, Lord. Today's a new day. A chance for a new start. Yesterday is gone. And with it, any regrets, mistakes, or failures I may have experienced. It's a good day to be glad and give thanks. And I do, Lord. Thank you for today. A new opportunity to love, give, and be all that you want me to be. Today I want to start the day with you on my mind and in my heart. As I dress, let me wear the armor you've provided daily. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. The shield of faith. The belt of truth. The shoes of peace. And the sword of the Spirit. With prayer on my tongue. Praise for you. And petitions for those around me and those I meet. Feed me today with your daily bread. As the bread of life. Your food, like manna. Will sustain me throughout any trials and hungers. Help me to set my thoughts on things above. And to speak only what will help. And encourage others. Keep me from putting my foot in my mouth. And help me guard the affections of my heart today, Lord. Make whatever work I do be marked with excellence rather than perfectionism. As I seek not to make a name. But to make a difference. Help me to treat each person I encounter as you would. With respect and love. Forgiving others and asking for forgiveness myself when needed. As I start this day. Help me remember that I belong to you. And my desire is to act accordingly. Keep my feet from stumbling. And my mind from wandering into distractions. That could steal precious time and energy. From the most important things you have designed for me. I'm proud to be your child, Lord. And I'm so grateful that you died for me. Rising again so that every day could be filled with the wonder of your love. The freedom of your spirit. And the joy of knowing you. I know earthly life is short and fleeting, Lord. But I want to live today. As if it were the first or the last day of my life. Giving thanks for every good and perfect gift you choose to give. Today, and every day. I want to live my life for you. Jesus. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Hello, maayong buntag sa tanan. <laughs> so good morning everyone. Kachuk lang bigi mo rag. I look very um dark so karon okay na siya okay good morning everyone um i know that uh i think you're still in your um provinces na pamu sa inyo hang ko ano inyong hometowns no and i really apologize if we really had to have our uh, makeup class this morning but i promise you it will not be very long compared to what we had last week no so uh it, it, we will just only tackle one topic compared to last friday wherein we tackled two topics or half of the first topic and the rest of the second topic so um today we will be tackling uh, evolution and diversity which is our last topic for biology. Uh, so, humana na jud ang third session da yun. Ang saya-saya. But anyways, before we formally begin today's uh, lecture, no, because di ata mag-kuan, di ata mag- uh, uh, let's not waste time, no? Because I know that you would like to go back to what you're doing in your home. So, uh, before we formally begin uh, today's lecture discussion, let me all greet you. A very good morning. Let's hear your voices, Dobe. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, good morning ma'am. Ma good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Ah, man, ako ban. I cannot hear you. Sa asa man mo nagkuan, naglaag-laag ka ron, no? Um, may I see a raise of hands of those who are, ideally a raise of hands, but may I see a heart of emoji of those who are in their hometowns right now? Isa na asa ilang mga hometowns. Uy, daghan-daghan, no? 
Mm, so a lot of you are for those who have um sent us a heart emoji in the chat box kindly tell us be asa di ay mukha ron i want to know where you are right now no ako kay my hometown is Cagayan de Oro so um i'm still here in the city uh, wala ko naglaag asa lagi nga balay fatima fatima bitaw ah nari si ozami si sabrina hello langga Eh, naasa Pagadian si Roy. Wait, I've never been to Pagadian before. I've been to Ozamis though many times because my best friend lives there. Uh, I, I le lived there. The I that was her hometown. She's now in the U.S. So, yeah, I know Ozamis. Wait, Sabrina, na apa ng Mowap Sabrina? Misamis Occidental Aquamarine Park, na apa na siya? Oh, <laughs> Kuan ka ng pugad ng mga lovers, no? Darag ako ang dit-dit. Sana on. Yeah, they, they, pinas na inin sa namin. Eh. Hey, sana on. Okay, si Frexita nasa Bukidnon. Where in Bukidnon are you langga? Cherry is in Gitagom. Oh, hello to Gitagom. Rian, papauli na may gikan butuan, ma'am. Pero need ako, need Di pero di na ako ni hometown. Huy, naglaag na di ka din ha, Rian. Uy. So, um, hello to your hometowns, to your families there. Uh, Pakihilo na lang ko sila, pakiregards ko sa inyong mother, father, and other family members. No, hopefully you have you you have had a great time. No, kay back to reality na to sa Monday. <laughs> oh, oh. Pretty much has super back to reality because we will have our intramural games or our Liseo U games on Monday uh, and the whole week of next week. So if ever you have lacking requirements from your first or your second um, sessions, please do accomplish them uh, within this week and next week. Ha? Uh, you have a lot of time to accomplish that. So make sure you do that. Okay. Bawal jud mabagsak. Bawal mabagsak di. Walay di na siya pwede. Anyway, so um, without further ado, let's begin today's topic. Eh. Para uh, sa yu tamo man, para napa may time to, you know, uh, spend with your family and all that. And para na may quality time with your loved ones for today. Anyways. Ana na siya. Okay, makita na siya. So, welcome all to our last topic for Earth and Life Science or under biology, under our third session, and that is on evolution and diversity. So, uh, I also hope that you have had your breakfast already because it's already 9 a.m., no? Ma'am, karun pa ko kamata, ma'am. That's okay. <laughs> I woke up really early today because wala lang, it's very sunny outside and uh, it's very nice outside. It's very like um, very summer, eternal summer weather. So, um, yeah, so have your breakfast. Uh, if you have ha not had your breakfast, then have your breakfast right now or have your snacks right now. Okay, para kuan, uh, busog ta kamulog ka learn about evolution and diversity. So, uh, let us begin with uh, this, no, with this photo. What do you see, and what do you think they eat? Okay, so maybe we have uh, you. You see in in this uh, photo right here, there are four uh, images or four sketches of birds. No, so can somebody tell us? Any volunteer from the class who would like to tell us what you observe or what are the differences that you see? differences i mean that you see in these sketches yes juliana ilang beak mom very good ilang beak so what can you observe about their beaks langga na sure different sizes mom for example ang number 1 kay dako kay ang beak tapos pagabot kay number 4 kay more ni minimize siya mom okay very good no so lay lay sila beak okay any thank you so much langga uh Naapay laing observation from the class? Naapay koan? 
Napay laing uh, thoughts? Any other thoughts? Wala na. Fatima, yes, Fatima. Any other Hello. thoughts? Um, hmm. Hello. Ha, unsa lang ga? Hello. I call her. Okay, can you tell us more about the caller? Ko ano ma'am, kanang dala sa first one kay a uh, black kaayo tapos a uh, hmm. ang second kay dili eh, black ma'am pero dili kaayo ang third kay nay black kamay. Tapos ang um, fourth kay yellow ma'am pero nay black yakon. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Langa. No. So, um, very good observations from the class. Hala, Cherry, na akay thoughts. I'm so sorry. Karon pa ko kita sa imong kuan hand. Yes, Cherry. Any other thoughts, Kaan, Langa? Evolution sa toka sa bird, ma'am. Like, kanang ang first hmm. kay nga na. Nagamit din. Nag-evolve din siya nga. Nagamit sa sige nila gamit sa lang toka. Hey, very good observation, no? And very good use of the word evolution because I think you've already encountered that concept way back in junior high school. So I think wala na ni siya problema sa inyo what, if I ask you what is evolution, no? But you are all correct. There are many differences in these sketches. But you know what? All of these come from the same kind of bird, no? But they're just, uh, these are just four varieties of the same bird so if you notice na ay kanang mga scientific name diri and if you notice kanang na ay mga birds diri that have the same genus no same genus basically all of these birds are finches finches f-i-n-c-h finch so kinin mga finches no they are all the same however they have different varieties now very good ang observation ganina that they have differences in their beak no na ay uban nga dagko just like this one na say uban nga dagko siya pero uh, it's it's big but it's not as big as the one in number 1 and then na ay mga cute na mga beaks and then na asay ka mga slender and mga thick uh, not thick sorry thin nga mga beaks all right so what do you think is the reason why they have varying sizes of beaks or varying shapes of beaks Anyone? Ngano ka, Laila, isa lang beak? Na thoughts on this? Yes! Laduha lang po si Fatima o si Cherry. <laughs> okay, si Cherry man ganina, si Fatima na sad. Okay, yes, Fatima? Um, depende sa ilang gikaon, ma'am. De very good, langga, no? So, it depends on what they eat. Because... Uh, if you remember, when we talked about uh, the unifying themes of life, one of the things that we talked about is how form fits function. You remember that? I hope you remember this um, theme of life. Form fit, fits function. What does that mean? Kung unsa ang imuang ginakaon, asa kagapuyo, and all other things, no? Our morphology, meaning ang ato ang shape sa lawas, ang atong functionality sa tong lawas, will base on our function. Okay? So, our morphology is based on everything that we do in life. All the things that we do to survive. So, in this case, if dagko ni sila beaks, meaning maybe they eat like fruits. Oh, pwede na siya. Or if they have really thin uh, not really thin, sorry. Or if they have like these small beaks, maybe they eat insects, no? Maybe they do. So if they have like long, long beaks, long pointed beaks, maybe they have to poke uh, something. Maybe they have to poke wood. They have to poke a tree so that they can get their food that to solud sa kahoy. No? So there are many possibilities to that. So, in Anna Asha, so same happen with human beings. So, if you're going to look at yourself, what are the things in your body na, gi, uh, na product of evolution? And uh, it is based on how we do things, no? how we eat, how we survive, how we grow, and etc. Or where we live, and etc. Et so, 
Koanesha. It all comes down to evolution. So what is evolution? May we have a volunteer to read to us the uh, definition of evolution? Who would like to volunteer? Yes, Juliana. Basaho naman, no? Yeah, go ahead, Nanga. So what is evolution? A process in which organisms developed and diversified diversified from early forms of life. This gradual change in appearance and characteristics of organisms is primarily due primarily due to the changing environment where they need to adapt to. Very good. Thank you so much, Juliana. So um, evolution is all about survival. We need it for survival. That's it. So if evolution does not happen, somebody evolution does not happen in an instant. No, it depends on the kind of organism. Like for example, for human beings, it takes years, it takes decades, it takes even centuries for us to evolve with the characteristics that we need to survive. It doesn't happen in an instant. However, um, there are also organisms that evolve really quite quickly compared to that of human beings. Like for example, your mosquitoes, no? Kana mga mosquitoes because they have a very short lifespan. Kajuta kina ilang life, it's less than a month. Matay na dayon sila. And because of that, the way that they evolve only takes, or the, the, the length of time, the length of, of time it takes for mosquitoes to evolve is really, really short as well. So maybe within a year, kapila na sila mag evolve. Another is, uh, let's go down uh, to the smallest of, uh, smallest of organisms, like your bacteria. No? If you're wondering why, uh, if you're wondering why um, there are multiple like influenza vaccines and uh, um, influenza is gone. it's a bad example um pneumo vaccines ana uh, sya mga pneumonia vaccines usually di ba every uh, every year na siya gagawas uh, sorry not not every year but every 5 years na siya gagawas it is because the bacteria that causes your pneumonia, no, kanasha, um, it evolves in that way, no? even if they're very small, and even if they last, um, ang ilang uh, lifespan is really short, no. So they evolve every five years or so. But of course, it depends. It really depends on the environment. Like for example. Evolution sometimes happens faster in colder, not colder, so in hotter climates than that of colder climates. Because, of course, the increase in temperature increases your metabolism as well. While if in lower temperatures, the metabolism is also low, the rate of metabolism is also low. So there are many factors that affect uh, the evolution of a particular organism. So, depended jud na siya. All right. So, let's look at the evidences of evolution or how we knew that evolution does happen. No? So, number one is direct evidence. So, pagpakita pa lang nimo in, uh, in, uh, at first glance, using your vision, you can already see that there are similarities to our morphologies, no? And different, maybe lahi-lahi lang tanga species, but we come from, from, from bleh, but we come from the same genus, or that we are um, genetically linked with other uh, organisms, no? So, indirect evidence, these are, uh, they, these comprise of observations of the emergence of new species from pre-existing ones, especially when, sorry, this is when, <laughs> natago ang letter N, I'm so sorry, when they get confined to a new environment. So later on, I will let you watch a video, I will share to you a video on how we knew that we are actually genetic cousins with the chimpanzee. Now, how did we know that? So, kanasha. So, kana ang direct evidence. Another is a study of your embryo or what we call as embryology. So, if there are similarities in embryonic development, then there might be a genetic link um, 
a, a genetic link among all among these particular organisms. So giun sa pagdevelop sa ato ang embryo. Like for example, nganong ang mga mammals kay giusa man sila sa class mammalia. Inana ba? Nganong gi kabalo man tanga mammals sila? It's because they have or we have the same uh, the same development in our mother's womb. Inana. Nganong kani mga fishes inani man sila? Nganong giusa man sila? It's because again they have the same development in their mother's womb. So on and so forth. So that is an evidence of evolution. Another is the emer not the emergence, but the evidence of homologous structures. What are homologous homologous structures? Pangalan palang no homologous structures. Homo meaning same. Okay, same. Uh, when you talk about logos or logi, manasha logi from the word uh, logi kanasha na logi kumam Okay. Or when you say homologous, it means asocianic originate. It originated from the same, maybe from the same organism, from the same thing, etc., etc. So when you say homologous structures, these are morphological structures of organisms that have the same evolutionary origin. When you say morphological, it means ang ihang structure, no? Morphology comes from the word morphology or um, physical structure na siya. Kung unsa ang iyahang appearance. Okay? So that means if they have more homologous structures, they actually descend from the same ancestor or from a common ancestor. So looking at this image, no, tanawa gali ni siya, no? Why is it? Ay! Sorry about that. I'm gonna zoom in. If we're gonna look at these structures, you will see that. Ang humans, no, kita ng mga humans, our bone structure, our phalanges, no, we have very similar structures to the cats and the dogs. Balag wala yung dog din yung image, ha? We're very similar to them. And ang imong whale, tanawang whale, kanang iyahang fin, uh, kanang iyahang, kanang iyang fin, sa iyang ginagamit, pang move, pang mobilize uh, in the water, it's very similar to that of the bat. Man, but the fly man sila ana but actually if you're going to look at uh if you're going to look at documentaries on uh the origins of organisms no actually kanang ang ato ang whales uh, although they live uh in the water they are mammals no they are some of the few mammals that live in the water and kining mga whales ninyo uh before they come from the land, the very first organisms come from uh, the ocean, come from the water. So, katung mga very small organisms, and eventually, because of the varying um, varying weather that we have, the varying sea levels that we have, dili na sila ka survive sa sa oceans, ding at din sa land, and then even na uh, time nga init ka ayo. Mo balik sa tubig. So, inana na siya, balik-balik na sila, depende kung asa sila mo survive o ayo. So, actually, ang imong whales, ang ilang structure, no? Um, uh, their morphological structure, especially these ones, so, kini, kini bitong connection, kini bitong wrist part, the connection to, uh, from your forearm to the forearm part or the forearm equivalent sa whales is that, is, very similar to that of your bats, your cats, and humans. So that is how we know that oh, we are mammals. We are we come from the same class. Same with your, same with your bat. Bats are basically rats that can fly. <laughs> basically, mauma na ang bat. Oh, oh, ang bat are just basically rats that can fly. So nagdevelop lang sila o wings or ang ilahang ang ilahang supposed to be ang kanang ilahang front legs developed into wings so inana siya no that's evolution another is the evidence of vestigial structures what are vestigial structures these are uh, anatomical features of organisms that previously performed a specific function and karon dili na wala na siya 
uh, function. Mura na siyag ka ng labit-labit. <laughs> Mura na siyag labit-labit ka ron. Because uh, why is that so? Because we don't need it anymore. Maybe there is a change in the environment that uh, we live in or um, nag-change, uh, yeah, yeah, change in the environment or we we ourselves have migrated to a different location. So these structures are no longer need, needed. And that is due to natural selection, basically. So mana natural selection? Kanang by chance in nature na ay mga nga eliminate na mga species kung unsa tong nabilin motos lang ang dominante and then when they reproduce mas daghan sila kaysa sa katong nawala na mga species so that is natural selection like a very good example of that is a structure found in uh snakes no so sa snakes they actually have this pelvic girder girder Girdle, girder, no, no, I'm sorry. Pelvic girdle. So this this is where hind legs are attached to because, believe it or not, snakes used to have legs uh -uh, a long time ago, a long, long time ago. That is why there are lizards that also have legs, no? But tungod kay nag-separate man sila, nag-change sila og location, nag-change sila og um, survival mode, uh, mo ng some of our snakes, have evolved into snakes that don't have legs. Ano siya? So, kana da yun siya, ninggamay da yun ng pelvic girdle, hantod nga, dili na siya magamit, pero naalang yapon siya dan ha. Okay? I think you've also seen this in, I I don't know, in TikTok or in in YouTube, but uh, there's also a tendon in our wrist that actually, that exists in some people, but also exists but also does not exist in some people. So, naiuban nga naa, naiuban na wala. So, there is this tendon. I don't have it, so I cannot show it to you. But there's this tendon that kung mag, kumo ka sa imong kamot, na ay ka nang mo protrude bito nga tendon din ha. Kuno daw, that is something that, uh, that tendon used to, uh, was used to, um, I forgot my question, uh, I forgot my, ano, I forgot my sentence, but uh, that particular tendon uh, was very useful to us way back when. No, but now we don't use it anymore. Same with our wisdom tooth. No, kisa na tubo na wisdom tooth diri heart emoji dobi. Oh, oh, wisdom tooth kana siya di ba? Unnecessary. <laughs> Ang wisdom tooth. It's called wisdom tooth because I had a mo siya motorok uh, sa kanang late na nato nga teens, late teens sa nato nga nga time no and <laughs> One of wisdom tooth. Okay, nagain na the wisdom at a time. But wisdom, the, our wisdom teeth, because not we don't only get like one tooth, no, as wisdom tooth. We some some of us have wisdom teeth. We have a lot. I have a lot of wisdom teeth. I have like four of them. So I have one in each uh one in each corner. So naasa upper right, upper left, lower right, and lower left, and it's so painful. But wisdom teeth are really unnecessary. In the past, yes, when when we were of different species, kanang ko an pata, wala pata nag evolve sa karun as a Homo sapiens, no? We used to, uh, we used to need that ang wisdom teeth because we had uh, larger jaws way back when. Oh, oh, if you've seen skeletons of the our kanang previous na species na to, no? atong ancestor no dagko ang ato ang jo because we ate different things way back when oh, oh we had to crack our own nuts we had to bite into like raw flesh or tough flesh karon kay we get to you know process our meats and eat cereals and all that uh, so we don't need the extra uh, the extra length of our jaw. But way back when we did, that's why we had wisdom teeth. Karun, we don't need it. That's why it's so uncomfortable. And it is something that we can just get rid of. We can have it extracted if we want. So it's not necessary at all. So that is what vestigial structures are. And of course, we have genetic similarities. So genes of various species that descended from a common ancestor are made up of similar nucleotides and proteins. We have learned that we are 
very much genetically similar to chimpanzees. About 98.8% of our genes are actually very similar to chimpanzees. So they are our closest genetic cousins. We are 90% similar to cats, 60% similar to fruit flies, 60% similar to bananas, believe it or not. If feeling in yung asaging mo, then go, go, go. 80% similar to cows and 94% similar to dogs. No? So, kana siya. Uh, malaray na siya sa ato ang epigenetics na to. If naatay ka ng as assay sa ato ang genes. So, that is... Uh, medyo advanced na niya nga feature. That is how we know that we are evolving. And uh, we have, of course, fossil records. No, So, naatay, um, we're looking at morphological similarities sa sa dinhi. So, fossils of the same species were found in land boundaries of existing continents. Bahalag, bahalag layo kaayo. Oh. Actually, we talked about this uh, earth science when we talked about plate tectonics, no? Be, um, because there are evidences na kini siya nga particular species. So, wala lang siya nang exist sa Osaka continent, but also in another continent. So, na ebidensya nga nang move ang ato ang plates and at the same time nang evolve ang ato ang uh, uh, ang ato ang organisms differently based on where they eventually lived. Okay, like for example, for example, this one, what is Equus? Do you have any idea? What what skeleton is this? The skeleton of? What do you think? Anyone? What's the a skeleton? A rat? <laughs> a deer? A what? Yes, Fatima. Dinosaur. What's the fat? Dinosaur, mom. Dinosaur. <laughs> recent. May wala may dinosaur ko sa recent times. Uh, this is actually, or these are actually, uh, the uh, skeleton of kanding daw na si cherry. Uh, these are actually, uh, skeleton of your horse. Equus is a horse. Kanisa Equus, uh, uh, a horse na siya knows and its ancestor. So, ang um, Equus is the oh. recent, ang um, kuan no kanang present na tong horse no, and then the other ones, the Pleohippus, the Merichippus, and the Mesohippus. These are the ancestors of the our of our horse, the the horse that we know now of. So as you can see, there are slight. Even if subtle lung, even if subtle, there are very subtle or slight differences between the morphological structure of the skeleton of the horse. But these, kana siya, nakita na siya sa lain-lain na lugar. So that is, that is based on fossil records. And lastly, there is artificial selection in agriculture. Okay. Like for example, not what we call as natural selection and artificial selection. So, uh, ang example ako dili is the giraffe in natural selection because we cannot we cannot artificially breed. Oh, not really. We cannot. It's just that for the lack of trying, maybe, or we don't really need it. But we don't really artificially breed giraffes because they are as what they are. You no, know? whatever whatever species will dominate under the, your genus of giraffes baon na siya that's natural that is nature however karon kita we have this what we call as artificial selection or artificial breeding di ba naate different kinds of dogs and why did we breed different kinds of dogs in the first place it is because we use these dogs. We have domesticated these dogs from the wolves. Okay, among wolves, so that among gikan among ato mga iro no gikan with us as wolves. So from the wolves, we have domesticated them for thousands of years. And then, what do you mean by domesticate? Meaning, the allow nato sila like, live with us. And then, naatay relationship, mutual relationship with the dogs. So, uh, we bred them for function. No, natay mo nang naatay dogs that are called sheep dogs, natay dogs that are called retrievers. Like if if you've 
if you're familiar with that, like Golden Retriever, Labrador, Labrador Retriever, Natay Shepherds, German Shepherd, and all that. Ngano gitawag man sila ginana? Because that was their job, no? Mo na ilang work. Kano mga Labrador Retrievers and Golden Retrievers? They were they are called Retrievers because they retrieve. Gakuwa sila og anything na kailangan sa ilahang tagiya. Ngano gitawag mag Shepherd ang German Shepherd? Because they were shepherds. They were bred to be shepherds. Meaning sila ang ga guide sa mga sheep sa usa ka sheep farm natay gitawag nga sheep dog because they do the same thing no then naalin tay what we call as lap dogs why are they called lap dogs because because they're literally lap dogs they stay in the lap of their masters decoration dogs lang sila ina na siya no what about huskies they're called huskies because they husk joke lang <laughs> they're called huskies because Ang ilang tabaho kay mag magdala sa ilang master no sa snow sa kanang uh, place kanay kuan na ay eternal winter no sila sled dogs na sila no so we have done that we have done the artificial selection uh, we have done the artificial breeding which then resulted to artificial selection matira matibay da yon dara and it also depends on our uh mo our motivation and our um molegina our motivation to breed these particular breeds no we, to breed these particular species of dogs or these particular varieties of dogs so mona siyang artificial selection so actually na i video na i video but i will let you watch the video later na ha Kay koan ka ng, medyo taas ko siya, it's around 24 minutes, but it is important for your last activity sheet, manggod mo. Alright, let's go to the factors that lead to evolution. Nga nung mag-evolve man ang organisms? Why do organisms need to evolve? Okay, I, not, sorry, not need to evolve, but unsay mga uh, things that actually affect evolution. Okay, number one is gene flow. What is gene flow? Gene flow is a transfer of alleles from one population to another. This occurs when certain animals move from one population to another. Like for example, kini sa image diri no, na kay green, na kay brown beetles and green beetles on the on the right. We have brown beetles on the left and green beetles on the right. Now, these are basically Organisms of the same genus, of the same species, but they are of different varieties. Lahit lahit lang color, anak lang. So in that case, no? What if ang, ang brown beetle, ganahan siya mumpuyo with the green beetles? Na siya. No? So kung mulib siya among the green beetles, mubreed siya among these green beetles, there is a 50-50 chance ng ilahang anak kay brown or 50% chance said nga green. However, if it's going to live among, if the brown beetle will live among these uh, green beetles, uh, in this population of green beetles, that would mean that in this area right here, so right, mas gamay ang brown beetle. Inanet siya. So that is gene flow. No? So, na ay variations in and uh, variations in the species yes but pag counting mo ana in the variations in the trait na ilang nakuha no it will depend on of course kinsa ang dominante nga color dan ha or kinsa ang dominante nga allele or unsa nga dominant unsa ang dominant nga trait na ana nga population so a good, a, an example of here is during the summer Many spores from fern and fungi will be transferred and spread to new areas due to wind and water currents. And darat na da yun ang natural selection. It depends da yun kung survive ba na siya da to or dili. So, ilana no? That is gene flow. Second is genetic drift. What is genetic drift? It is a change in allele frequencies or genotypes that affect small populations of organisms. Some alleles will decrease in frequency and become eliminated because, because of chance, causing a loss in genetic diversity. Chance lang jud na. Like, for example, 
nagka-typhoon, nangamatay silang tanan. So, usay na bilin, katulang na bilin. Kung unsa na bilin dito, like for example, ha, tanawa na to ni nga image. So, for example, naakay population of five ladybugs and, ay, sorry, five blue ladybugs and five re, read the noon, red ladybugs in this particular population. So, five is to five na siya. Now, what if imuha siyang, nalap, imuha siyang na laparuhan with a fly swatter? Pag laparo ni mo, randomly, nakapatay ka o upat ka blue ladybugs. So, ang ratio ka ron, nahimun siyang five red ladybugs is to one blue ladybug. So, kisa naman ang dominante ka ron, which is the dominant one. Ang dominante ka ron would be the red. Okay, mas daghan na siya. And then, ang recessive diri kay, dominant recessive mana, ang recessive diri kay, ang blue. So, if they ever choose to reproduce, mag-reproduction na sila, reproduce na sila, mas daghan pa jud ang red nga ladybug kaysa blue na ladybug. Same gap na siya, if, if you're gonna think about like kanang real uh, current nga kanang examples, no? Oh, uh, yung mga bias sa South Korea. Oh, oh. Sa South Korea karon, they have uh, uh but in in the year 2023, they actually have the lowest lowest birth rate uh in the whole world. For of course, i, i compare na siya sa other statistics in the previous three years. So, can you just imagine? Wala na cha cha unwo. Wala na future um Limin ho. Magina na ninyo. Wala na. Their, their birth rate is so low. Now, what's my reason nga nung low kailang birth rate? What's my reason nga nung gamay na sila? What is the reason behind that? Eh, do you have any idea? Nga nung low kailang birth rate? Na mga ideas dire? Yes, Angel. Kay mga dili sila ginaalaw nga dagan og anak ma'am. Kay dili pareha sa Pilipinas nga bisag pila lang ang anak ang sa dara sa Korea kay kanang naa sa limit. Same sad sa Japan kay ang akong ay tung last kay akong ngidungan kay naa gyud limit sa Japan nga dili daw pwede dagan anak. So basin same sad sa Korea. Ay China. China di ay that's a little bit outdated na lang ka, ha? because the one child policy the one child policy <coughs> happened in the late 80s and the early 90s uh, this was even before I was born before I was born pa dyan. so that happened then Eventually, uh, ang problem ang good sa China so na because this happened in China. Um, what happened then was that China was going through an economic um, depression. Gabi ilang economic depression sa una. Kung kita ma depress sila gabi, the whole nation was depressed. <laughs> economic depression. Um, so they imposed that one child policy, but actually nowadays, um, wala na nasha. Wala na nasha because they learned the, they learned about the repercussions of the one child policy. And most especially during the one child policy, no, um, there were, uh, this was not publicized during that time, but later on, um there were actually there were actually like whistleblowers or people from remote provinces uh, remote cities in really large provinces in china who reported that um the one child policy had another another policy and that is ang dapat ang ilang anak kay lalaki lang oo so my god so they are facing currently they're facing the repercussions of that uh, of what happened before, na face sa mga dire consequences of what they did. Lower na ang birth rate gihapon sa China. Lower gihapon siya. And uh, you know naman ang China, ang ilahang driver sa ilang economy karon is really on workforce, like providing workforce to kanang outsourced na mga 
um, na, ma, na, na mga businesses, no? Uh, lo, na local na sa outsourced businesses. Like, for example, ang koan, ang Apple iPhones, no? They're being assembled in China. Uh, and some of the assembly also happens in India. So, you know, in Asia. However, that is not the case for South Korea and Japan right now. They're facing low birth rates because of social na mga issues. Okay? So, dili uh, siya. This is also a form of this is also a form of natural selection. Uh, dili lang ang natural selection kay nangamatay sila tungod sa bahaha, tungod sa uh, tungod sa earthquake, tungod sa tsunami, dili. It is also being caused by our own fault as well, social issues. Uh, there are researches that are being done uh, sa kanang kaan, anong low ang birth rate sa ani na mga nations. No? But uh, basically, uh, one of the main reasons is that ilang economy. Ang ilang economy, they cannot afford to have children. They cannot afford to have children because both mother and father are working. So who's going to make bantay the children? Uh oh and because of that, so ay bantay sa children. And dobi kay, sige, nanny. Dobi kay, mahal makay ang nanny. Oh, saan na na? <laughs> Karun. And another thing is, although education is free in both Japan and South Korea, the, uh, the, uh, the, the ironic thing here is, free ang basic education, like the 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. basic education, that's free. But actually, these students are encouraged to have cram schools. Have you heard of that term? Cram school. Cram, uh, cram school. Be a long time ago, when I used to be a teacher to Korean students, no? um, I used to teach, I used to teach in an academy. Uh, uh, they call it in, in in Japan, they call it cram schools. Uh, in Korea, they call it academies. Okay. So, kini mga academies, no, they are focused on a specific discipline. Like, for example, this academy is focused in sports, or this academy is fo focused in Eng English speaking, uh, English speaking, reading, basa English language. And um, this academy is focused on sciences in Anesha. So, these students, although their classes, formally end at 3 p.m., they still have to go to their chosen acad academies and then they will finish their classes, officially finish their classes at around 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. So, ina na siya ka-crazy, no? So, kisa ba may naay time for that? Because these academies are not cheap, no? I, oh, being one of the teachers there, we were paid a lot, you know, the academy was paid a lot. Uh, and then, mahal, mahal siya. And then, on top of that, if you go to these countries, if you go to South Korea or Japan, their food is expensive. Living there is significantly expensive than other Asian countries. So, when when do when will they get the time? When will they get the motivation? When will get when will they get the money to have more kids? So it's more of a social problem, but that is also natural selection, and that also affects genetic drift. So eventually, in the future, in the coming decades, mogamay ang Korean South Korean population which is also true for Japanese population. So, na, hold on to your animes. Kay, ang maghimo na sa anime in the future, mga Pilipino na. Hala ka. That is also why, mo uh, na reason why, sana, um, there are actually visas in Japan wherein they uh, admit kanabitong mga Anabitong mga half Japanese, half Filipino children that are here in the Philippines, kanahatagan nilag free nga visa. So that they will live in Japan. I have two friends na added to nasa Nagoya, Japan, no? Nga half Japanese man sila. So um, they now live in Japan because gilibrihan man sila sa government. Inana kalala ilahang, inana ka serious ang ilahang birth rate problem. All right. Third is mutation. I'm, we're not talking about X-Men mutation, diri ha? Kabalo ko nga ang gift na ko, diri ka si, si Raven or si ko ano, Mystique from X-Men. But we're talking about genetic mutation. Uh, 
mutation when it comes to the color of your eyes, the color of your skin, or uh, ang purma sa imong skeleton, ina na siya, that's mutation. Mutation basically is the kanang mis, uh, mistranslation of your genes. Mali-mali ang iyahang pagka, pagka-encode sa imuhang genes, no? So, mutation actually leads to uh, genetic variation. So, kini genetic variation, this is a very good thing, no? Because ang genetic variation actually creates variety. Creates variety. And if it creates variety, it increases survival. Kaya nga, no? Not all populations or not all organisms or kini nga particular species lugar ani nga uh, ani nga population not all will be susceptible to the same disease ina na na siya so uh ma lower ang chances of them dying from the same disease so mutation occurs in the dna kay the genetic mo na siya no which causes a nucleotide nucleotide base to be inserted deleted or substituted what are some uh, what are some evidences of mutation na yung mga kita sa kuan, in nature, sa itong mga bata? Kanang, I think kita na mo o bata nga na yung di ba? Down syndrome. Down syndrome is mutation. That is a form of mutation. Ang Down syndrome. Awan na siya, dili siya pariog na wong sa ito. Ah. Okay. Another is sexual, and this is the last one actually, sexual selection. Oo. Kay di ba, in nature, mamili man ang bae. Oo. So, bae, kamu mga bae din he? Ayaw mo pag apasapasog laki kay dili na nato nature. Kamu bitaw? Ang nature, ang giingon sa nature kay ang lalaki ang gaapas sa babae. Oh, oh. In sexual selection, female animals have a greater chance of selecting their mates because naamatay what we call as intersexual and intrasexual selection, wherein sa intersexual selection, males display unique traits that attract the females. Like for example, kini siya, no? Oh, so many? Peacock. Oh, oh. Di ba, tsada kay tanaw ng peacock pag ano, zing! Alin siya. Ang naay in ani nga trait are only the males. Okay? Only the males. Nga nun ga in ana man sila, shoot, pakita sa ilang tail. Mo man ilang way to impress the female peahens. <laughs> Nagloading yun ko, di man yun to peacock, ang, bab ang babae nga peacock. Peahen na sila, peahens, no? So, that is their way of attracting the female species. No? Another is, katabi itong example na ko sa inyo, katong bird na nagsayaw-sayaw, oh, nagpa-impress siya sa babae. So, that, siya ang piliyon nga mahimong mate sa babae. So, kana siya, that is intersexual. Ang intersexual is mag-lalaki versus lalaki, mag-away sila, sometimes to the death, no? Sometimes to the death para to get a chance to meet with the female species. Okay. So, a very good example of that are your kangaroos. Oh, talaw ka mga video sa kangaroos sa kuan sa YouTube. Kulba ka nila mag-away, no? Mag-usap ito ang mga laki, mag naiusa ka babae nga kangaroo nga in heat. In heat meaning they are fertile. So, masimutan niya sa mga lalaki, gusto sila mag-compete para sila ang mahimong mate sa babae nga kangaroo. That is also true for your cats. No, kanotis mo anak mag-away ang mga lalaki. Ang mag-away ang mga lalaki nga iring. Wow, wow. wow. Magalaan na so. Ang babae maghulat na siya. Oo, maghulat na siya kinsay makadaog o sige, ikaw ang makamate sa ako. Ah. So, that is intrasexual selection. So, usay lesson na to ani, girls, girls. As what nature has dictated to us, no? If gusto mo makawiyab, charot dok na. <laughs> oh, oh, follow nature. Oh, oh. No, dapat magpa-impress ang laki. Dili ka mo ang magpa-impress. Ginoo ko. <laughs> Char lang. But of course, uh, lahat man tano, we are different. So, sa human beings, pwede man ang babae, pwede sa ng laki ang magpa-impress. It depends, no? Now, in Darwin's theory of natural selection, there are uh, there are five tenets to this. Five or four? Five. Five tenets. Sa theory of natural selection. So, if na ay three principles of the cell theory, sa natural selection na ay lima. 
So first is living things that produce more offspring have higher chances of surviving. Ito ba, of course, kung, kung mas fertile na sila, of course, mas daghan sila offspring na ma-produce. Therefore, mas mo survive ang ilahang species. Another is organisms have the ability to survive. They will evolve so that they will survive in the next coming years. And eventually, when they reproduce and uh, not like offspring, this offspring will also evolve so that they will survive in the next coming years. Third is variations exist within a species. Like so, for example, yung dogs. No, there are many varieties of dogs. Na kay, na kay, um, what do you call this? Na kay pet bull. Na kay um, jackal. Na kay basa dagan, dagan no. Uh, these ko an kining particular uh, this image right here. These are actually already cross breeds of dogs, meaning. For example, ang German Shepherd, gimmix og husky, na na siya. Or ang Pomeranian, gimmix og husky, mo ng pomsky na siya. Oo. Or naakay ko ang sheepdog na gimmix og poodle, mo ng sheepadoodle. Oo. So, or chihuahua na gimmix og chug, uh, og pug, so mo ng chug. Oo. So, in ana, no, na atay crossbreeding sa nitabo. That's also the same for humans. Oh, ikaw makig uyab ka og afam ana so lahi na din yung anak it's already a crossbreed so filipino or atong based on our ano race no filipino and american american caucasian white kanang white people ana so kana siya maka produce ta og uh, anak na mix of the two Four is variation among members of a species increases their ability to survive and reproduce remember genetic variation actually increases our survival so it is very encouraged that we mix and match no diba napabay mix and match sa Jollibee karon ay McDonald's napabay mix and match karon ambot uh -oh. but we uh, we uh, it is important that we mix our genes to survive so i'm not i'm not like encouraging you to have a fam boyfriends but I'm just laying it out there. I'm just laying this information out there. Now, now, mas chada if makauyab mo outside of your area, outside of your hometown, outside of your city. Nala siya kay. Ano magong like if you're only you know makauyab mo yab ramo sa kanang same niyong town, lagmit igagaw ra day mo. Ha ha ha. If igagaw ra mo, gamay ra ang genetic variation. All right. So, last is living things that survive and reproduce pass their genetic traits to their offspring. If you remember, even if asexual ang pagreproduce, na pass kin mo genetic traits from parent to the offspring. Per medyo na siya. All right? So, these are some other uh, changes in the environment that affect extinction. What is extinction? Extinction is na eradicate or na wala na jud ang kana nga particular species. All right? So first is atmosphere. Nga naman, kay of course kung ma-destroy ang atong atmosphere, maghinahina na siya ka-destroy, magkainit o magkainit. Now remember, only uh, there are only a few species or uh, only a few organisms that can survive the worst kinds of heat and that is also true for the worst kinds of cold no there are only a few species na maka, maka survive of very extreme na mga conditions so if that is the case basig dili ta survive sa extreme heat or extreme cold that will drive us to um uh endangerment and eventually extinction. So atmosphere and temperature, pareho na siya. Flood and glaciation, which is a secondary effect of that of the thinning of your atmosphere and the increase of your temperature. Of course, no, it will lead to so many disasters. Of course, mawala ang many populations of a species. Species. Fourth is cosmic radiation and asteroid impact. Like your dinosaurs, how did they die? They died kuno daw because of an asteroid. So kuna siya, that's a calamity, no? Diseases like atong COVID-19. Before that, uh, naatay Spanish influenza atong 1920s. The Spanish influenza actually eradicated a lot of people, thousands of people. It actually was able to kill more people 
than that of the people who were killed in World War One. So can you believe that? Kan kailangan matay tungod sa Spanish influenza. That is also the same for your COVID-19, no? Because of COVID-19, even if ang ihang mortality rate is only 1% lang, uh, ang pasabot anak niya kay every 100 people na infected, usually usa lang ang mamatay anak nila, no? So, actually sometimes ang mortality rate gali kay less than 1% sa COVID-19. But because of that, there were actually a lot of people who died. And lastly, the spread of invasive species. Okay, like for example, na species aning a aning a environment or aning a river na species of fish nga ko anti sa kanang invasive sa meaning gakan onya tanan nutrients ang obang fish kay mga matay na lang kay wala na yung bilin sa ilang a nutrients. So kana sa invasive species. So these are the changes in the environment that actually affect extinction. All right. Now let's proceed to I just have a checkpoint kay napamo ko ipa-watch sa inyo nga video no. So I will be uh this video that I will let you watch is actually um sa ta kani is actually the video nga gi require na ta watch for your last uh, activity sheet that is activity sheet number um 10, activity sheet number 10, and that is on evolution and diversity. So, um, this is the cognitive trade of hypothesis, and this actually uh, this actually explains how close we are, genetically that is, close we are to chimpanzees. So, this video is around 24 minutes long, so uh, please do uh, listen well. Huh? This is Inuyama, Japan, a historic city home to Japan's oldest original wooden castle. It is also home to Kyoto University's Primate Research Institute. Here, a group of chimpanzees have been trained to play a game that exposes something shocking about their memories. This is gonna blow your mind. Here is how it works. Take a look at these numbers. One, two, three. Remember where they are because they're about to disappear. Can you point to where each number used to be in numerical order? Probably, it's pretty easy. One, two, three. But what if we make it harder? Get ready to point to where each number was in order now. If you feel like you didn't have enough time to memorize the screen, that's fine. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Or is it? Here is a chimpanzee taking exactly that long to memorize the same arrangement. Nailed it. Each of these puzzles is completely new to the chimpanzee, but just a glance is all it needs to completely capture all the numbers. How can a chimpanzee's memory be so much better than ours? Well, one theory is that we humans are worse at this task because we can talk. makes humans different from other animals? Well, one thing is language. We have the cognitive ability to communicate not just about what's happening now, but also about what did happen and what could happen. We can tell stories, and it's awesome. But if language is so good, why didn't any other animal develop it like we did? A good approach to this question is one that looks at how we are different from those who were almost us. Around seven million years ago, there were no chimpanzees and there were no humans, but there were chulkas, an acronym which stands for chimpanzee human last common ancestor. Like us, chulkas didn't have great natural offenses or defenses like blistering sprint speeds, protective shells, or claws, fangs, or venom. So, living in the safety of the trees was great. Those who stayed became the chimps we know today. But for reasons we're still not quite sure of, 
some of the Cholkas decided to venture down to the savannah. Without appropriate physical abilities, things like cooperation, imagining new strategies, and the assigning of roles were necessary for survival, all of which are easier if you have a rich collection of symbols that can refer to things across time, language. Many different types of creatures emerged with varying adaptations, but today, only one member of the family remains, us. Language as we know it may have been one of the strategies that kept us alive in the savannah. But where did it move in? The brains of those who developed language and those who didn't aren't totally different. A brand new brain structure didn't just pop into existence. Instead, anatomy used for other tasks must have been sacrificed. And as it turns out, for beautiful reasons, detailed short-term memory may have been a fair thing to lose in return for language. This trade-off between memory and language is the cognitive trade-off hypothesis. The cognitive trade-off hypothesis is the culmination of decades of work by one of the world's leading primatologists, Professor Tetsuro Matsuzawa of Kyoto University's Primate Research Institute. Founded in 1967, the institute was created for scientific research in association with the nearby Japan Monkey Center. The collaborative centers house over 60 species and nearly 1,000 primates who live and play in open spaces. Look at monkeys. <laughs> Look at spider monkey. Is there a baby on that one? Yes, 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 yes. Six months old baby. Six months. Yes. <laughs> Showing the monkeys and apes in the tree. Yeah. High in the tree. That is the key because they live. That's where they live. Uh, in their natural habitat. Can you do it? <laughs> Dr. Matsuzawa has spent over 40 years researching non-human primates. He splits his time between fieldwork in the West African country of Guinea and here in Japan, where he and his colleagues have developed a chimpanzee habitat designed to mimic life in the wild. This habitat is home to Skylab, a working laboratory set high atop the chimpanzee's climbing structure. In this open air lab, chimpanzees are free to come and go as they please. And this is Hayum. This is Hayum. Mm. If they decide to stay, they participate in cognitively enriching tasks designed to mimic foraging behavior. When the chimpanzees are interested in participating, they enter one of Skylab's specially designed computer booths where a camera uses facial recognition software to recognize them and select a test based on that particular chimp's current familiarity with the task. Each trial takes about as long as it would for a chimp to forage a single bite, and each morsel of food they get is accounted for in their diet. Do the doors open when they approach? No human even needs to be... No, nothing. So what is for us a great way to collect data is for them an experience similar in many ways to what they would be doing in the wild. There you go. Impressive. Dr. Matsuzawa has been running memory tests like these on chimpanzees since 1978. His research has shown the phenomenal and nearly photographic short-term memory of these primates. Two of the most famous chimps at the PRI are I, named after the Japanese word for love, and her son, Ayumu, whose name means walk. What can we learn about ourselves by studying chimpanzees like them? Well, I want to find out. If we and chimpanzees come from a common ancestor, mm. what can explain the split where the chimpanzees don't seem to need or to develop language like we did? Why would that happen? Was it an accident? The various evidence tells us chimpanzee was so strong and continued to stay in the forest. We humans were not so strong. We were kicked out from the forest. Uh -huh. And coming down to the ground to go into the dangerous open land where lions, cheetahs, and 
those carnivorous creatures. We protect ourselves from the predator. Our habitat provided a, a pressure to develop language. Yes. We have to collaborate each other mm. so, uh, as a group. That's incredible. Mm. So in a way, we should be really grateful that our ancestors were so weak, they got pushed out of the trees. <laughs> we have succeeded to show extraordinary memory capability of chimpanzees. He is protesting. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> I'd invite you to be a part of this interview, but you don't have language. He doesn't need to have the language. So chimpanzee yes. mainly live in the world of here. Right now. And now. Suppose that something happened in the bush. You have to count up one, two, three, four, five, how many enemies there to make a quick decision to go into the territory or lead to lead. Mm -hmm. So that is the life of chimpanzees. Quick decision. Quick decision. Our quick ancestors decision. didn't have that same pressure? In the course of the human evolution, we may have had this kind of capability, but we lost it to gain the new function, the language. Hmm. Maybe memory and the language, the very rudimental form was located in uh, neighboring parts of the brain. So to expand one area, another one must be shrunk. So putting all those things together to, to postulate my trade-off hypothesis of language and memory. The cognitive trade-off hypothesis suggests that in the dangerous world beyond the trees, early humans needed to teach each other and use abstract symbols that could refer not just to the immediate here and now, but to hypotheticals and generalities. Making room for that kind of abstract thinking meant sacrificing the immediate and detailed memory of their ancestors. I can think about the future of my child and their children. Yeah. Chimpanzee do not have this kind of planning of the future. So the difference in one word is imagination. I'm able to imagine hmm. past and future. I'm hmm. able to describe things in an abstract way hmm. and I don't need the details because I have the label. So it seems like a pretty good trade-off. Yes, but how do we use the power of imagination? Is for sharing. Yeah. Helping each other, collaborating each other to raise the children. Yeah. I understand chimpanzee mind so that now I understand the unique feature of human mind, and that is sharing. What a great message, right? Mm. Sharing is what makes us mm. us. Yes, sharing is the matter. I would love to see your working memory tests on mm. chimpanzees in action. Mm, true. I would also really love to participate myself and see how well I can do compared mm. to a chimpanzee. Yes. Have you ever had a human and a chimpanzee compete like that together? No, not really. So you are the rare person. I think they're excited about the idea too. <laughs> An opportunity to do the memory task, just like a chimpanzee, is really special. Who knows how it will go? Let's see who shows up. She seldom makes a mistake. Yeah. You're really good at this, huh? <laughs> Looks like today it will be celebrity chimp, I. I is older now, and just like in humans, her cognitive abilities have decreased with time. So I may actually stand a chance. So why don't you try? To face off against I, I will be sitting in the booth next to her. Okay. Now normally, her son Ayumu plays against her, but today, well, she's in for some Michael time. I'm not your child though, am I? The tests are going to get harder as we go along. How will my memory compare to that of a chimp who never made the same cognitive trade-off? In the first round, the task is to remember where each of the three numbers are in numerical order. But here's the trick. As soon as I touch one of them on the screen, the other two will be covered by solid squares, so I can no longer see where they are. Now, well, it's up to my memory. 
Okay, let's go. If I make a mistake, I get an error noise like this, while a correct answer sounds like this. When the chimpanzee gets it right, they are rewarded with apples. The human, me, well, just gets the bragging rights. I'm not getting apples. <laughs> You really actually have to focus more than I expected. Almost messed that one up. Finished. I 90%. How did Michael do? 95. 95. Pretty interesting. On my first run, I've managed to beat I. So the next one is slightly more difficult. What is the next task? How many symbols? No explanation because no explanation to I, no explanation to Michael. Get set to go. Whoa. This is a lot harder. This game is similar to the last, but starts a little bit differently. This time, three numbers appear on a blank screen, but as soon as I touch the first one, the entire screen is covered in boxes. Michael, congratulations. I? You having fun? Whoa! She's nervous. She cannot do very well, so she got upset to you. I is used to Ayumu, her son, playing the game beside her, so my presence may be throwing her off. I'm here for moral support, I. It was fun squaring off against I. But I want to see how I would do against her son, Ayumu. So, would you like to try Ayumu's kind of memory test? I'm ready. Okay. Ayumu is currently Matsuzawa's best pupil, able to ace the memory tests at blazingly fast speeds. But today, Ayumu is not interested in mental combat. He's busy flirting with some young ladies who live with him here at the PRI. And since free choice is the guiding principle of Matsuzawa's research, we can't make him join us. The good news is that Ayumu doesn't need to be here for me to compete against him. The game can be presented to me just as Ayumu does it, with nine numerals. Let's see if my luck is the same against Ayumu as it was against I. Ready, get, set, go. Oh, man. You may take a time as long as you want okay. to remember nine numerals. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> Even when I take time, I can't do it That's right. That's right. Even you believe that you remembered, actually not. Take more time. Okay, to more time. I thought I had that one. It takes a long time to memorize nine numerals positions. Hala ni hina ako internet. And fail. It's embarrassing how long this takes me. I can do this one. Got it. All right. Yes. Could you come here, please? Yeah. <laughs> you took a long, long time. <laughs> Many seconds. Or you don't need to laugh about it. 16.9, 7.1, 7.0, 13.7, 2.9, 
Mm, getting better. I got better, but, uh, yeah, because you were, you were pressuring but, uh, me. But you move, it's 0 0.5 second. Jeez. So you always two, three, four, five, six Six seconds. times worse, yeah. six times slower. Yeah. So would you like to try Ayumu's speed? Yeah, I would love to. Okay, please okay. go ahead. This is the most difficult test. So Ayumu chimpanzee mode. I have to remember all nine numbers in numerical order at Ayumu's okay. speed, which is to say, I have to do what I could barely do before, but now I have to memorize them all within the amount of time it takes to blink. 0.5 seconds. <laughs> so I get half a second to prepare. And uh, it's impossible. I'm gonna prove you wrong. As a reminder, this is how Ayumu performs, which is standard for a young chimp. Okay, let's go. You gotta be kidding me. That's way too fast. I got the first three. Good boy. It's like a joke. Oh, I don't know where the two is. It's too fast. I'm trying to think of this very holistically. <clears throat> After the first three, if I see them, I'm just having to guess. So you recognize that you cannot do just like Ayumu. It's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. Well, I hope this was helpful for you. It was the first time you had had a, a chimpanzee and a human together mm. in the booth. Yes, what it do was you think? fantastic. It was so interesting. Uh, you chimpanzee and Michael. <laughs> if you ever need me mm. to study as a primate, oh, yes. I give myself to okay. you. Not many people recognize the history of studying chimpanzees is very short. Mm. In the world, only 60 years. Wow. But chimpanzees survive 50, 60 years. So this means we need the patience. Chimpanzees are classified endangered species. So to pass those treasure to the next generation, now we have to do the action. We need more information from chimpanzees to continue the research to know more about the chimpanzees. They are evolutionary neighbors, cousins. So the comparison of different species mm. uh, let us know the evolutionary origins of many kinds of human traits. And we need to make sure to preserve them. Right, conservation. They're already endangered. Yes and yet they are our closest right. link to understanding what we came from and where we might go. Mm. It's like taking care of your family. Mm, right. Quite literally. Yes. <laughs> My hope is you prepare the message to the people, what you have witnessed, what you have experienced. That is human because the keyword is sharing. The fact that humans alone use complex symbolic language doesn't make us any better than any other species. It just means that the path we took required it. In fact, in some ways, we aren't better because we can talk. Today, we study those who took different paths as a way to learn more about ourselves. If we lose them, we lose part of our story, where we came from, who we are, and who we can be in the future. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh, heart emoji daw bi sa katong mata pa. <laughs> heart emoji sa katong mata pa. Mm-hmm. Oy, daghan pa daw mata. Oh, well. <laughs> So I hope that you have <coughs> enjoyed that, no, as much as I did. Because I have been showing this um, cognitive trait of hypothesis. I've been showing this for years, actually. 
uh, as a teacher since I started as a science teacher. And uh, it is still amazing until now because uh, not not a lot of students know about this. Not a lot of even even like normal people. Not a lot of people know about this that we are evolutionary cousins sa chimpanzees and that ang kuan na to no ang goal na to is <clears throat> not to uh sa ta kanika nang nila to improve nga better tanila or through through research no na prove na to nga we are not better than them we're not better than them we we come from the same uh ancestor but we have evolved and we have developed because our survival needed that most but so now that you've watched the video now you can start answering your activity sheet number 10 no that is on evolution and uh diversity so kindly answer that within your free time if you would like to if you would like to watch that video again the link uh, to that video has been posted in the google classroom in your google classroom kindly Tanawa lang ang stream, ha? Tanawa lang dito as a stream na to. Um, kung ansad siya, kanyang, naasad siya sa activity sheet na I link that to. You can click on the link sa soft copy sa inyong activity sheet or if hard copy ang naas sa inyo, ha? You can type the URL sa inyong web browser. So, inanan siya. Alright? So, uh, I know it's already 10.33, pero mag-answer ta o checkpoint before we go, no? So that we can prove that you have understood today's lesson. Okay, let's start with number one. Who would like to read to us, number one? Who would like to volunteer? Okay, go ahead, Angel. Kindly read the question and the choices lang ga. Throughout history, humans have particularly bred crops of high yield, nutritive value, and resistance to environmental stress. This exemplifies the role of humans in ecosystem through A. Artificial propagation B. Mutation induction C. Natural selection D. Selective breeding All right, thank you very much. Okay, for those, uh, for the other people, or for the other students, kindly type in your answer, the letter of your answer in the chat box. So, matupanya. Throughout history, Kunadao, humans have particularly bred crops of high yield, nutritive value, and resistance to environmental stress. So remember, na atay keyword nga, particularly bred. Okay, particularly bred, meaning specific, specific breeding. Oh, gituyo siya. Okay, gituyo. This is an example of asa ani. Artificial propagation, mutation induction, natural selection, or selective breeding. Ayan. Oh, the can kidak answer of letter D. I love it. That is indeed correct. It is letter D. This is the closest, no? Di siya pidi artificial propagation. Okay. Kung artificial propagation gani. Na wala. Na, for example, nagimu ka ukoan. Nag, Nagpag-grow ka o corn, and then gigrow ni mo siya sa laboratory, inana lang. But in the in the question, mga good kay, particularly bred, na kay keyword nga, particularly bred. Okay. Mutation induction, wala siya nag-talk about any kind of mutation whatsoever. This is definitely not natural selection. There's nothing natural about this. So, ang nabilin, selective breeding. Very good. Okay. Um, kisa ka itong nag-volunteer ganina, nag-raise of hand, for number two, would like to volunteer? Say, gusto mag-read? Hello? Wala gusto? Okay, go ahead, Juliana. Number two, which of the following does not lead to species extinction? A, extreme changes in the atmosphere. B, Question. genetic variation. Choices na got choices. Choices. Nag oh, choices, yeah, ma'am. Oh, read the choices. A, extreme changes in the atmosphere. B, genetic variation. C, cosmic radiation and asteroid impact. Or D, diseases. Mm. Asa ko na daw, ang dili galid to extinction. Mm -hmm.
Okay, all right. B, kunyo daw. B, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, very good. That is indeed correct. It's genetic variation. Remember, if there is genetic variation, you increase the survival rate of that particular species. All right? All right. Let's go to number three, the last one. Who would like to volunteer to read to us number three? Any volunteer? Nay volunteer. Hello? Anyone? Hello? Well, I'm agreed. Okay, go ahead, Sophia. The bacterium called Staphylococcus aureus is part of the natural bacterial flora of the human skin. What will happen when people use antibiotics for his bacterium extensively and irresponsibly? The S. aureus will A. become ex extinct, B. become more sus I suspect, I, huh? susceptible hmm? to drug action. C, susceptible, susceptible to drug uh -huh. action. C, develop resistance to antibiotics. D, transform into another form of pathogenic bacterium. Okay. Kabaloko that not a lot of you know the answer, but you can take a guess. A guess lang good mo. Mm -mm. Diri, ang bacterium Staphylococcus aureus, which is actually a very common cause of your, you know, your, um, sa ni, your skin, <laughs> nagloading na sa ko ka ng imuhang mga skin infections, kana siya. Uh, kana siya, normal flora siya sa up, but if mudaghan siya pag ayo kana din yung maka-infect. What will happen when people use antibiotics? Antibiotics, remember, these are drugs that kill bacteria, okay? For this bacterium, extensively and irresponsibly. Extensive and irresponsibly. Like, for example, usually, ang antibiotics, kuha na siya, no? Ang antibiotics, seven days and three times a day. Maodyo na siya. What if extensive siya, like dugay kay ka nag-take, like for example, wala pa man ko na ayot, imo, na ko siya 15 days, ano, lugar, for example, and irresponsibly, hala ka, ka nang, nakalimot man ko, so twice a day na day ka nag-take, ana, so dili mao sa instruction, so, kung saan ko mahitabo sa Staphylococcus aureus, is it A, mahimo siya extinct, B, become more susceptible to drug action, like dali na siyang, dali na siyang mamatay tungod sa antibiotic. C, develop resistance, meaning dili na siyang matablan, sunod. Or D, transform into another form of a pathogenic bacterium. Okay, sige, guess lang mo. Sige, yung answer dun ha. A, B, C, D, O. Oh. O, oh, charot. Okay, very good. I like your variety of answers, no? Ganyan ko, Ana. Uh, ko, Ana, Nisha, for your information, Nisha, kay Kabalo ko that in your lifetime, no, you will uh, maka ma-admit mo sa hospital, then ma-prescriben bitobong antibiotics, and then mo yung nga ang doctor, nga mo niya ang way of taking your antibiotics, and it is very important that we follow those instructions because these are really the the standard extra instructions jud you know what happens if mali imong pagtake sa antibiotics mali imong timing mali imong frequency dili mao imong length of time na nagtake kasi imong tambal kay gi, gi customize jud na siya nga 7 days no kay ang dosage sa imong antibiotic mo base anang 7 days og 3 times a day kay dali na mo guna i remember ang 7 days og 3 times a day one week for three, 
three times a day for one week, di ba? Dali na siya madumduman, no? So, gi-adjust din ang dosage, anak, para may make sure niya nga ang imuhang uh, whatever bacteria you have in your body, uh, mamatay na siya in that length of time. Okay. So, usa kay answer, anak, if mali-mali imong pag-take? Actually, ang answer, anak, is actually letter C. It's actually letter C. Mag-develop siya o resistance to antibiotics. Kanabi itong like, for example, lugar, uh, first dose kay, hala, natablan ang ang bacteria, agay, na, na, kuan siya, nasama siya gamay ang bacteria. Dabi kay, wala mang ka nag-take sa, sa udto. So, ning-gain siya o strength. Oo. Nag-take this kasi gabi, ipang, nasama siya gamay, pero gamay rasad. So, more bitaw, na-learn bitaw niya nga, ah, inana di ihang attack. So, I will learn to fight back. Oo. So, manang, if you have, if you encounter that in in the community, no, kana bitong maka encounter bitong with people na na ay uh, TB, tuberculosis, kana uh, dugay mo kaya na ilang therapy. Sometimes mo give up bitaw sa satunga tunga. Oh, so kung mo give up sa satunga tunga, maka create siya og drug resistance. So if ever mo lala na sa iyang sakit, then gusto na siya mag antibiotics. Dili na mo gana ang antibiotics sa iya ha. So wana siya ang Importante when you take this, kaya kung ano siya nung ga-evolve mangun imong bacteria. Oo. So, always remember that. Alright? So, that is it for this morning. Are there any questions? Pa-heart emoji naman dyan kung walang question. If wala, if na may question, then do ask na. Okay. So, I will wait for all of you to have a heart emoji. Charong. Charing. Is this me? One guy ang deadline sa minor PT, which katong answer sheet. Next week lang ga. Next week on Friday. Ano sa date? Sa date ano? Six, seven, ten. November ten, Friday. I will post the submission tab here in Google Classroom. So hinahinay na mag-answer ha over the weekend and all that. Pwede sa next week kung dili mo athlete. You can answer that next week. And what else? I will also be posting the short quiz number 11 on evolution and diversity later on. Right after this class. All right. So, all of my questions. So, that is all for this morning. So, ABM 6, 7, and 10, thank you so much for coming to our class, our makeup class this morning. Once Google will be done in rendering the recording of this session, I'll be posting the link to this session later. Ang link kay YouTube siya nga link. So, katong klase na to, makeup class na to, itong Friday, na-post na na ko siya kagabi i. Kay kagabi pa na ko siya na-upload sa YouTube. YouTube ang gamit kay mas paspas mong good siya. I, I mean, mas convenient sa inyo kung mag-watch mo sa video. Kay kung Google siya, kay Google Drive, kay Dugay, kayo. Ma'am, katos reporting nga wala na tagaan o questions, ma'am. Wala na to. Wala na. Joke with <laughs> uh, I will find a schedule for that lang. Ha? Definitely not today because I'm pretty busy today. And I don't think everybody is here. Everybody nga wala na natawag. And in addition, ang ako ang clipboard sa katong mga names na nakalista dito ang mga ni, ang mga people nga wala na ka-oral restitution. Na sa office. It's in the office. I'm not in the office right now. Oh, so, ah, it's so sad. So, uh, I'll find a time for that. Uh, I will just announce in your GCs kung pwede next week sa intramurals, no? Basig, mag-face-to-face na lang ta sa school. Ana na lang kay mas, um, di ko nga online kay, di ko nga nahan. Oo. So, face-to-face -face sa school. I'll just announce. All right. If wala na yung question, say, thank you very much for coming. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope you have fun. And I'll see you all sa itong intramural games opening. Yes, this Monday sa school. Thank you so much. And ayo ayo. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, mom. Thank you, mom. Goodbye, mom. Thank you.